Welcome back guys, it's craft time. For today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a desk that was generously given to me. I'm redoing it to um, redo a space in the house. I am going to be painting it white and then doing a faux distress on it. I do my distressing a little different than most people would do, so I'm just gonna walk you through how and show you how I do it, give you guys some alternatives that you could do instead. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to begin this project, my first step is I want to go ahead and clean the desk. I happen to have a deglosser by um, Rust-Oleum that I had for a cabinet kit that I used, but I'm sure that you could pick it up at your hardware store or something like it. Basically, what this is going to do is to strip off that um, like glossy top that this desk has on it, and it's also going to clean it really nicely. Um, so to do this, I'm going to apply it to a rag and give it a good scrub, get it in all the crevices, and then wipe it down with some warm water with dish soap in it. So that's the process to start it. If this is going to be used in a more rough manner, maybe for a kid's room or something like that, I would suggest going ahead and putting the time in to sand it or at least the top of the desk to make sure that paint really adheres to the piece. However, it's going to be used by me um, and my boyfriend and it's not gonna be getting beat up a lot. So I didn't feel like this step was necessary for the use that I am using it, but that's a per personal preference. If you're not going to sand it, definitely get some kind of liquid sander or cleaner or deglosser that's going to take that off so that the paint has something to stick to. The next step in the project would be to remove any hardware that you have and go ahead and tape off any spots that you don't want there to be tape. For this it would be my handle on my drawer and then like the tracks into where the drawer goes in and then some couple other random spots like the, around the drawer so that I don't have to be too careful and worry about if I'm getting paint on anything. And then from there you can begin. So I'm going to be using a semi-gloss um, white that I already had on hand. It's made by Bear. It's in um, primer. It's a two-in-one, so it has the primer already in it. Um, that way it just sticks a little better. It's a little bit more heavy duty. You can use whatever paint that you want, whatever colors you want. I had a specific style in mind, so this is what I'm going to use because I had it on hand. I went ahead and started with my first coat. With this one, I didn't worry too much about what it looked like. It was basically just to get the paint on it so that the next layer has something really good to stick to. So it took me three layers total of the white. So I went ahead and did all of that. Um, weather was not on my side, so I had to do this over a couple of days time just to make sure that the layers were drying properly and that everything was going smoothly. And then from there, that's when I started my my fake or faux distressing. So usually, you know, you would to distress something, you can sand it. You can do all kinds of different types. What I wanted to do, this because this started out as like a dark brown and I want my distress to be in a black, I'm just using a bottle of black acrylic paint that I have on hand and I'm doing a dry brush technique. So with that, I have these rough paint brushes. The rougher ones with like the stiffer bristles work best for this. Um, you can find them in your craft stores or even your hardware stores. Um, as you can see in the video, I kind of show you what it looks like. And what you wanna do is be very, well, I guess I get a little heavy handed sometimes, but pretty light handed with it. I just use my little plastic palette, put a little bit of the paint on there, dip my bristles, just the tips into the paint, and then I dab it off onto the side of the palette to try to get most of the excess off. And then all I do is I lightly brush that onto the areas where I want there to be a distress. I also have on hand probably three or four paper towels that are wet and a cup of water. So what I'm going to do is take those wet paper towels and then I'm going to wipe away the excess paint. So what's going to happen is um, it kind of gets into the any like little pockets or grain in the wood that might be showing through the paint. Um, I try to make sure I go with the board. So if the board is vertical, I do my, my swipes vertical. If it's horizontal, I do a horizontal just to kind of give it, you know, like a grainy, so as if it were going with the grain of the wood, if you could see it. So that's what you wanna do. You just wanna lightly brush it on and then brush it off. If there's areas where you want, like on the corners and things where you want a little heavier distress, you just put a little bit more um, paint on there. If you find an area that you have too much paint, as long as you haven't left it there and just let it completely dry, 
you should be able to get it off. If it's not coming off when you wipe it, you just add more water to your paper towel and push a little harder and it will go away. So that's what I did over this entire thing. So when I got to the top of the pieces, when you have a big flat area, I try really hard not to use my brush on that because sometimes the brush strokes are harder to get away um, or they don't look as natural because it's a big space. So what I did is I just kept the paper towel I had been using for the entire project so it was all dirty and already had the black paint all over it. And all I did was use that and just wipe across the top. If I needed more paint on it or it wasn't leaving enough distressed look, I just take my brush with the little bit of paint that's already still on it and I just wipe it on the paper towel and then I do it again and I just wipe back and forth. As you can see in the video, you want to make these as straight across as you can. Um, you kind of naturally do like a, a rainbow or a bowed. It's just, I don't know, it's a natural movement. But what I do is I'll, I'll do it and then I make sure when I feel like I'm good with it, I go completely from one side to the other in, in full strokes and that kind of just blends it all together to make it look a little more natural. So that's what I did. If it wasn't really turning out how I wanted, I did use my brush on a couple areas, but that's how you kind of get a little heavy handed. If you do accidentally put too much in, it's not wiping off and it's you're just not looking, it's not giving you the, the look that you're wanting, grab that white paint or whatever color your base paint is and use it and paint over or even dry brush over it and kind of lighten it up back to what you're wanting. So that's how I do my distress. Like I said, if I would sand it, it would still give me that distressed look. However, it's not going to work as well for me because I wanted it to be black and not dark brown, but also because of the paint I'm using is a semi-gloss. So it's kind of more latexy and it may, I don't know, kind of like ravel rather than just sand. So you just have to keep those things in mind depending on what technique you want to use. So this is what I use. I've used it on several projects. Um, I'll show you another one that I did um, with all of these fun colors for a wood piece for my daughter um, for her name. Um, but yeah, you can use it on all kinds of things. And that's what I did with this desk. I, you could go ahead and seal it. I thought about sealing the top of this desk, but I was feeling a little lazy, but you would just use some kind of clear top coat um, over it and it would just protect it and help that piece last a little bit longer, protect it from scratches um, and that kind of thing. So yeah, this is my final product. We um, spray painted the knob black to make it match a little better and just put it all back together. All right, so that was a closer look at the final product. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to include pictures of it in the space that it's going into. I'm going to be doing some more um, working and crafts for that area and I will give you the final like look of the space once that is completed but that's going to be a little bit so these are just the pictures of it before and after. All right thank you guys so much for coming back and watching another one of my videos. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you have any questions for me please feel free to put it in the comments. I really appreciate your support. If you feel the need to go ahead and hit subscribe for me and I will see you next time.